Uh, we take a lot, a lot of confidence in the, the fact that since the first quarter of 2010, we've seen very significant and importantly very consistent levels of demand growth. Uh, in fact, in 2011, more rooms were sold domestically than ever had been sold before, according to Smith Travel Research. So the fact that demand has fully recovered uh, makes us feel really, really good about in terms of the fundamentals and where we are today. That's particularly heartening considering the fact that supply growth is at record low levels. So in the face of very strong increases in demand, uh, very limited uh, growth in supply, we're seeing some very attractive real increases in average daily room rates and importantly, profits. Uh, business has seen a huge rebound beginning in, I would say, the third quarter of 2010. 2011 was a transition year and already in our properties, which are mostly located in major urban gateway city markets, uh, we're seeing the uh, we're seeing ourselves back to where we were when we peaked in the years 2007 and the beginning of 2008. So what we're doing is we're making sure that we differentiate our properties to any level that we can, from the level of services to the amenities that we provide. But what we're doing this year is we put a full court press on revenue management, and everybody says those words and yield management as if they are just a just a normal part of day to day operation. But we're restructuring our entire sales offices so that we limit somewhat the, uh, the group markets and the lower rated foreign individual traveler wholesaler markets and we're targeting the business transient and the international leisure customers that are coming and we're making sure that every room that we get that, that we can occupy that we're getting a premium for that rate we're um, looking at every opportunity that we have to do um, displacement studies on literally every piece of group business that we do whether it's franchise generated or our, through our internal sales departments We've spent over a half a million dollars this year in upgrading and augmenting our revenue management department. We brought that in-house so that we're controlling, literally controlling each property's own destination through the auspices and the eyes of our corporate executive staff. I think from a 30,000 foot level, I think uh, confidence is, uh, is such a tremendous piece of the, of the growth we're going to see in 2012 and 13, and that stems from whether it's consumers and, and our guests all the way to uh, owners and operators as well as the funds um, and the capital that's out in the market. Um, that's, that's a driver that I think uh, cannot be ignored when uh, people want to travel, they have the confidence that they can travel and that the economy is coming back um, and our owners and the capital firms are willing to put money into something that they see as a production for uh, the next few years. Well I'd say uh, overall one of the biggest drivers is going to simply be supply and demand. Um, we all know industry-wide right now supply growth is extremely low, probably one of the lowest we've had uh, in the last decade. And demand, while it's not, uh, not the highest, is certainly exceeding supply. So we all have what I sort of call tailwinds behind us uh, as far as having growth this year. <clears throat> the other aspect that I think is important is uh, for the hotels that we manage, we're uh, very big on driving sales. So we're a revenue-driven company. And um, that revenue growth is going to give us the uh, cushion that we need to drive profitability in the hotels. Uh, particularly as we see the business coming back, we're going to be focused on that high-rated business, the uh, high-rated groups, uh, and drive profitability to our owners through that. We, uh, we do manage a number of resort properties, and uh, we just think the consumer is a lot more confident today. Uh, we're basically in drive to locations. They can get to us uh, easier on the corporate side. Uh, business has improved, certainly nationwide and I think all the experts have said uh, this year that, that we'd see gradual improvement and uh, we manage 70 properties and I can tell you every one of them is gradually improving. Our business the way I see it is the occupancy is definitely come back but um, we still have some room to grow on the ADR side um, so what I believe is that um, where we will see a lot of improvement over the course of this year in most of our properties is being able to drive rates. Basically over the, you know, the past several years demand has been down and um, it, which has resulted in uh, declining rates. Over the past uh, uh, 12 to 18 months we've seen an increase in uh, demand to the point whereby we need to offset that with increased rates to help justify our perform or to en enhance our, our bottom line performance. Um, 
you know, the rates have still not uh, regained traction from, you know, the mid uh, to late uh, 2007. So, um, you know, we've had to give up a lot over the years, and, you know, we need to recapture our rate positioning. You know, we see that the demand growth that's out there that's increasing occupancy now getting to a point where on any given day there could be, in any given market, there could be a limitation on availability of rooms. That's what drives rate. And so we're focused on being able to move rate uh, more this year than we have in the past, and we think that's a, a, a huge opportunity. Without a lot of new supply kicking in, and you know, this is the story of the industry, but it's going to be, uh, it's a good thing for rate opportunities. And as we all know, rate flows uh, to, the, to the bottom line faster than occupancy does. Um, I think part of the key is the return to group. Um, more group travelers, more group customers are, are now booking our hotels, although we'd like to see them booking a little bit farther out, but they are starting to book. So uh, more group awareness and uh, um, a higher group focus, I think it really is, is going to be is key going forward. Uh, one of the things that owners need to really look at is uh, the quality level of their property. So the customers are coming back, um, but have you done enough to upgrade the hotel? to keep it fresh, to keep it new, because everybody's going to be raising their rates. Uh, you want to keep those corporate customers coming to your hotel and not going to someone else's. So take a look at your property. Um, do you have the right TVs? Do you have the right furniture? Is it fresh? Is it new? Uh, is it up to date? And uh, will you be able to keep those customers rather than lose them to the new hotel down the street? That'll be coming up fairly soon. We're seeing a uh, uh, leisure traveler coming back and uh, we're seeing business groups coming back, so those are those are a good start uh, for us to head back to our 2007 numbers, which uh, is a goal that I think is going <coughs> to happen over <coughs> excuse me period of uh, three or four years. Uh, looks like it's a steady steady climb back, so that's what I'm I'm seeing, and and those groups coming back are important part of filling us out. Business Traveler has also been uh, coming back into the picture, so we're, we're seeing a pretty rounded uh, sec sector of uh, our travelers returning. The industry is starting to show uh, an increase in, in traffic through the corporate markets. Um, the the uh, Our local negotiated rate business uh, is starting to increase, not only in, in true business and traffic for their company, but the people that are bringing into our hotels, um, they're the our, our, what's what's changed this year over the last couple is the fact that the our average rate for our local negotiated business <clears throat> is increasing by uh, you know sometimes even you know 10, 15, 20 percent over last year. Uh, so we're seeing an increase in rate, uh, we're seeing an increase in occupancy, and it's through our co corporate logo, you know, local negotiated rate business that we're seeing that. So we're seeing uh, record high occupancies across our portfolio. We're operating in 26 states today. Um, in the last five years, we've seen occupancy stabilization, and this year is a definite opportunity to grab some ADR back from our negotiated segment. So we're, we're excited and managing that process very closely to try to maximize our RevPAR results across the board. <laughs>
as the demand sees that the product that we're offering is worth it. An interesting concept about uh, the, the, the rising uh, gas prices is that we've never seen the phenomenon that we see right now. And what I mean by that is we have a, a, a staffer in our office that all he does is negotiate and procures energy on a contract basis. And right now we're seeing natural gas at an all-time low. We're watching the NYMEX uh, graphs literally every day continue to go down, even though gas prices are up. But what's really interesting is when we went out to purchase uh, bulk purchase our electricity this year, in cities like New York City, Chicago, we're seeing seven cents a kilowatt hour, and in one se in one sense, uh, below six point seven cents a kilowatt hour, a price we've never seen before. So while we've never seen the cause and effect happen this way, where gas prices goes up, but commodities and utilities are going down, I would say no, we're not too worried about it this year. Well, it's certainly a concern, uh, whether it be the airlines or from, from car travel. Um, I think what, what the gas industry, uh, when the prices rise, I think what it does for our business <clears throat> is it shrinks the market from where people travel to get to your destination. So for a destination like, like where we are in Orlando, <clears throat> it shrinks the, uh, the circle of, of, uh, of where the travelers might come from, whether it's Ohio or Canada. Maybe that shrinks how far people will travel, but they're still within five to seven hours. I think there's still a significant... Um, amount of uh, individuals that will get in their car and, and come to a destination whereas they might have traveled further. So I think it just shrink, shrinks the, um, the circle of where people are coming from. And from a, from a vendor standpoint, um, certainly the cost to operate from whether it be a linen company or a mattress company, I think uh, the, transport, uh, the transporting those type of products is certainly going to rise, but I think there's enough competition to keep them in check. Uh, the impact of rising gas prices is definitely significant. Uh, we've seen in the past as gas prices go up, uh, travel tends to go down. It affects the airlines greatly, uh, and it affects people as they look toward uh, taking trips, uh, even when those trips are by uh, their own personal vehicles. Uh, so for us, offsetting that, uh, that increase in gas prices will uh, come down to picking the right kind of business, trying to find more local business and local opportunities uh, that can drive business into our hotels uh, and keep people from having to drive far or fly very far. Well, that, that is a concern. Uh, we, uh, we're headquartered in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Again, a lot of our businesses drive to probably 95 percent. The good news is I think we're, we're probably within three hours of uh, most of our, you know, where most of our people come from. Uh, so we've seen, really haven't seen an impact yet. Uh, the way to obviously combat it is we have to, you know, offer more value. We have to, uh, you know, work with our customers. We don't want to certainly overprice anything, although that we think there's some room for, for rate improvement. And uh, I think we're going to have to rely on more fly-in business. The problem is, as I was mentioning earlier uh, with respect to the other question of uh, being able to drive rate, you know, right now I see rates being already down as they are. So, you know, adding value through, um, you know, extra amenities uh, that will increase our costs, um, it just, you know, it's going to be a problem. It's definitely going to have an impact. And uh, it's, it's something that we're going to have to think about more closely. Rising gas prices are always a concern uh, in our industry because it impacts not only your, your drive-in traffic, but your, your fly-in traffic as well. Uh, airlines have already uh, uh, increased rates uh, on, their, on their flights. Um, and the impact of, uh, you know, on the short term, you know, with rate our uh, gas price increases will inc impact our drive-in traffic as well companies will start to um, uh, trade down, I guess, when it comes to uh, you know, their business trips, and that, that, that three-day trip may turn into a two-day trip because of the fact of compounding you know, travel costs with uh, hotel costs. Um, this will you know, negatively impact our business. You know, but going forward, um, you know, in the secondary markets, I don't see it as, as impacted as it will be in, in, our, in the uh, more, um, you know, the larger, large-scale markets, top 25 MSAs, because of the fact that not only you have the compounded cost of uh, gas, but you have, you know, the increased cost of, you know, uh, rates and um, parking and everything else you have to add to it. So, you know, moving forward, you know, our goal is that it may be a package and promotion type event whereby we have to, you know, give gas cards away to incent people, you know, on during staycations or uh, and even the commercial side where there's a benefit. It's, it's a concern in the sense that we are aware of it. But, I th you know, there's a lot of different opinions on what kind of impact it's going to have and where. 
the, the rising gas prices this time are not as, quite frankly, I, in my opinion, as emotional as they were a few years ago when they first started to approach $4. Um, we've already blown up this balloon, and so maybe it's just not going to be quite the issue that it was last time. Um, and, and the way I always look at it is, is mom really going to cancel the family's summer vacation because of X dollars and additional, the difference between three bucks and four bucks a gallon. Especially if your your SUV is now getting 20, 25 miles per gallon on the highway, it's it's not going to be a thousand dollar issue. It's going to be maybe a hundred dollar issue. And I think mom's going to going to make that decision to let's let's do the family event for the family for the family experience. I guess there's some issues too about gas prices or oil prices that relates to airline business. Um, it could be the same kind of a, a circumstance, but the, the the airlines, I'd be shocked if they move rates so dramatically that it curtails demand in, in the hotel business. And any of these things are going to be offset by the fact that there's just so little new supply on the horizon. Uh, yeah, I, I think a couple of things. I think clearly it's an emotional issue. But people need to do business. People need to meet. People still want to get together socially. People still want to go on, on family vacations. And I think that will continue. Um, what we can do to help our hotels is by enhanced marketing, um, by more awareness of leisure, uh, our leisure destinations, our driving local uh, nearby destinations, um, as well as continuing to help our owners with uh, costs and cost effectiveness. So uh, it's going to be a challenge for us, but uh, we're, still, we're still energized. Well, gas cr prices are always a concern for our owners. Um, you know, it, 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 we've seen this scenario before. Um, and in a lot of hotels, especially with the Hampton Inns, um, there might be a little blip at the beginning, but it tends to be short-lived. Um, Again, you just need to make sure that the, the customers are getting value for what you're charging. With our focus service hotels, generally uh, breakfast is included. Uh, sometimes uh, manager's reception is included. Um, so there's a lot of things that we already do that provide you know, value um, for those that are, that are traveling. Uh, hopefully they'll just keep coming to our brands versus the competitors. Certainly, uh, rising gas prices are, are a concern because, uh, again, on that leisure traveler, uh, the weekend soccer teams and uh, all those groups that, that help round out your occupancy are, are going to be challenged by rising gas prices. Plus, it takes uh, <coughs> additional um, money out of, out, of the, out of the economy and out of our, you know, our, our group. Uh, or our, our, our travelers that uh, we depend on for that, that weekend business. So I see that gas price as being the biggest challenge for the leisure traveler. The, the, the rise in gas and, and oil prices um, to, to me does not directly affect the hotel operation itself uh, as much as it affects the, uh, the transient business that are, that's coming to our hotels. Uh, we have hotels in, in the Midwest, uh, Wyoming, down in Georgia, and a lot of them rely on traffic, um, uh, whether it's transportation companies, uh, 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 trucking companies, uh, or just leisure vacationers driving from, from state to state. Uh, the, the rise in gas prices have, has affected that. So we try to do some incentives at the hotel, uh, some programs, maybe give some gas cards. Uh, obviously, it doesn't affect our corporate market as much, uh, but it does affect our, uh, uh, our, our properties that are on highways and, and, uh, and tourism locations. I'll tell you, I remain concerned about gas prices. The cost of flying today from what it was uh, most recently, some of the fares that are out there are, are triple what they were before. I just paid $980 to go to L.A. It was $380, you know, six months ago. Clearly, at some point, you know the cost of gasoline is going to be impactful to the to the consumer and to our guests. We have not seen it so far in none of our leisure markets. Are people saying they're not going to come? They're not going to spend money on vacations this year. However, you know I'm still a believer that six dollar gas is a big issue. I think at some point people will either stop going out to dinner, they'll stop buying new clothes, they'll stop somewhere because they have to buy fuel to go to work. 
So yeah, I'm concerned about it. We're watching very closely our booking trends. We're, we're, we're talking to more lo local negotiated customers and trying to wean away a little bit where we can from the leisure segment if it makes sense to us. But thus far, everyone's opinion is that everyone's doing the best job they can to manage their expenses and are not planning on cutting back travel. So we'll see.